What's happening guys? So this is Nick with Small Engine Wizard. Today we're gonna go over this Arians Deluxe. Uh, this is a, what do we got? 30 inch here, uh, EFI today. So these can be a little bit tricky to get diagnosed. Um, I'm gonna go over the specific problem I had with this one, which happened to be a fuel pump issue in the tank. So we're gonna go over that, how to replace, how to test, and how to make sure that that's actually bad beforehand. Um, also, at the end of this video, I will post a chart for our diagnostic codes on our ECU, which is what I'm gonna also go over. And I will also post in the comments a PDF or a link to the service manual for this machine. And that will work for all of these um, Arians EFI LCT engines. So uh, we'll get that taken care of. Let's dive on in. So in this video, we will be using a power probe. It is possible for you to do this all with a multimeter, but I do like this tool. It makes my job a whole lot easier. So this is what we're gonna go ahead and use. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure that this battery has voltage. This is a 7.2 volt six cell battery, now lithium, which is just a nickel metal hydride battery that they give you. Okay, so we got our battery here and we are going to back feed these. We got two little wires. We're gonna back feed these to set up our power probe. So then we can get to testing, see what's going on. I do have um, all of this loosened up already. So you can go ahead and do that, get that out of here. Our whole control system should be loose. Um, battery does help if you take it out. You can also test the battery by just unplugging it and you can test the voltage right here directly. So we're gonna test this battery voltage. Go ahead and back feed this, positive and or negative. Shove that right in there. Okay, so we got some power on our power probe. So we know there is some voltage in the battery, but what is it? So we'll hit our positive, we got 8.1 volts. So we're good there. We got plenty of voltage coming out of this battery. So we have plenty of voltage to be able to run our system. So another issue we might have is voltage not getting to the board. So we're gonna go ahead and check that. So we will take the other end of this switch. We have 8.1 volts on our positive. And as it should be, we have a ground on our negative. So we know our connection is good. So I will say a common issue that I have seen with these batteries and these terrible connections that they put on here, sometimes the connection will push out, so there will be no connection. It won't butt up to the connectors inside. So that really does become an issue because then we have no power. So that can be the issue. I've seen about three or four of these machines with that same issue. Um, things don't really seem to be going bad on these. They are only a year or two old. So it's really tough to say exactly what will happen with these. But um, once we do get these figured out, we'll have a little more information on common issues with these snow blowers. Um, so let's get back into it a little further. So another thing the Arians did here on our board is they gave us some trouble codes to go by. So basically what's happening here is we have our red light and that's gonna tell us our trouble codes. So we're gonna turn our key on. We're gonna let this board do its thing for, you know, give it 10 or 15 seconds, and then it'll start shooting out our trouble codes. So this one had a trouble code for number 27, which is low fuel pressure. So it looks like it's just kind of bugging out right now because it is. Um, it's just trying to, you know, do its thing, find its parameters, get everything set for a second there. So what'll happen is the light will blink twice and then it'll blink seven times for our low pressure fuel code. So we'll go one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And that's our low fuel pressure code. So what did this here tell me? This told me that I have low fuel pressure somewhere, so I need to start looking at what that deal is. So let's take a look and we'll dive a little bit further into that. So me knowing we had low fuel pressure, uh, basically the first thing I did was I checked our fuel filter, our fuel filter's clean. I was getting fuel through it. But what was happening is when I was turning the key, I wasn't getting a really good flow of fuel. It was pretty much just dribbling out of there. So I went ahead, I took this tank off, I drained it, because if we're doing anything electrical, we don't really want to be messing around with gasoline and electrical connections, because that could get a little bit dangerous. So don't do that. Drain your fuel tank, make sure there's not really any fuel present when you're trying to do these things. Basically what I'm gonna do here is we're gonna take the power probe. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna turn the key on. My servo is working. I can hear my injector wanting to work. We have a positive and we have a negative on this fuel pump. So we're gonna see exactly what goes on here. 
So key on, I got seven and a half volts on my positive and key on, I do have ground at my negative. So we're good there. So now I'm getting power to the fuel pump, but the fuel pump is non-functional. So we went ahead and removed this fuel pump. Get this fuel line off of here. So we have this fuel pump here. We can take our power probe, get that out of the tank. We can hook our negative and we can hook our positive. We can give this thing a little boost. So we got our eight volts to there. This fuel pump is doing absolutely nothing. So this fuel pump is confirmed dead. So fuel pump replacement, let's see what we got. Okay, so we got our new fuel pump here. We'll see what we got. We got our positive, we got our negative, and we have action. So I will show you guys how to install this fuel pump or remove the old one, because it can be a little tricky. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna find our little sweet spot. This does turn in here just a little bit, so we could turn that around. Of course, take out our three screws, one, two, three. And then we kind of have to play with this a little bit just because of the way that the filter is in there. So we might have to shove a little something in there to get that fuel filter out of the way, but it does remove with a little bit of effort. We're gonna take the new pump, grease this up just a little bit. Nothing worse than a new broken part, so definitely grease that. Try and be very sparing with the grease. You don't need much, just a little bit to help slide it in there. So now filter will go down and we'll slide this in. And we'll bolt it back up, three bolts, and then we're good to go. Make sure the key's off in this situation. Okay, so we'll go ahead and we'll get our leads hooked back up. We got our positive, we got our negative. What was happening before this fuel pump was here. So we were getting a small trickle of fuel it was uh, actually stuck in the open position when we had it. So let's go ahead, flip this key on, and we'll see what we got. There we go. So we got plenty of fuel pressure. So we'll hook this back up, we'll see what we got. So with that new pump installed, let's see what we got. We got key on, batteries in. Thanks for watching guys. I hope this video helped you out with uh, your issue with this snowblower. This is one of many common problems that can happen with these. Uh, I haven't seen too many of these in the shop. Um, probably one of the reasons is that some of them are still under warranty. So I don't really see that. I am not an authorized Arians dealer. I am also not an Arians warranty center. Um, so I cannot speak for that. Uh, how many problems there might be with these, I don't know. I just go from what I do see. So if you guys like this video, please hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and we'll see you guys next time. Thanks.